Welcome to Countout. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the cash conversion cycle. What is the cash conversion cycle? Well, we're going to look at what it is. We're going to look at the formula of how to calculate the cash conversion cycle. And we're going to go through an example that will help you understand it thoroughly, as well as how to analyze the cash conversion cycle. So let's get into it. What is this all about? Well, the cash conversion cycle is a ratio that measures the number of days it takes for an entity to convert its investments in inventory into cash. Okay, so that is what the cash conversion cycle does. It gives you the average number of days it takes for an entity to convert its investment in inventory into cash. Calculating the cash conversion cycle is an easy way to assess a business's liquidity. The key elements of the cash conversion cycle are inventory, receivables, and payables. So we're looking what's happening in those three areas. What's happening with inventory, receivables, and payables. And you'll see how that works right now as we look at the formula. This is basically the number of days from the time suppliers are paid to the point where cash is received from customers. Very important to take note of that. It's the number of days, the average number of days from the time you pay your suppliers to the point where you receive money from your customers. Okay. And like we mentioned here previously, that we are dealing here with inventory receivables and payables. Okay. So why inventory? Obviously, we're buying inventory from our suppliers and we're selling it to our customers. Why receivables? Well, receivable is money that is owed to us by our customers okay so they will be buying inventory on credit and then we will wait for a specific number of days for us to collect the money from our debtors or receivables and why payables well payables is also important because when we buy inventory we're buying from our suppliers on credit okay so we're not buying everything using cash we're buying them on credit okay and that's why we're looking at those days from the time that we pay those suppliers okay so we buy them on credit and then after a specific number of days or as soon as we can pay the suppliers we pay them so from that point where we pay the suppliers to the point where we go back to our clients whom we sold to on credit and collect that money. That is the number of days we want to see and that is the cash conversion cycle. Okay, I hope that has made sense. Generally, the lower the cash conversion cycle, the better it is for the entity because it means that it takes fewer days for the entity to turn its investment in inventory into cash. Okay, and that's what we say in the first point that we're looking at the average number of days it takes the entity to convert its investment in inventory into cash. Okay, so obviously the fewer those days are, the better it is because we are saying that it takes us fewer days to turn our investment in inventory into cash. Okay, and anyone would want that. Okay, so we're saying here generally, okay, the lower it is, the better it is for the entity. And that is what we are trying to monitor. And like any other ratio, as we always mention, when you look at the cash conversion cycle, the average number of days, it may not make much sense on its own. Okay, so it only makes sense when you compare it to something else. And I'll explain that further when we look at the example. Okay, so you can not look at the cash conversion cycle for, for instance, this year, 2020, and be able to analyze it on its own. No, you have to have a comparative. Either you compare it to the previous year or look at the trend for the past five years or compare it to the industry average or to your competitor. So what is the formula for the cash conversion cycle? Well, here we go. It's the day sales in inventory plus your debtors or average collection period minus your creditors or average payment period. And that will give you your cash conversion cycle okay so let's see them one by one day sales in inventory or average age of inventory these terms are used interchangeably okay so you might be given your day sales in inventory now we did a lesson specifically on that one in fact on all these three we did a lesson on day sales in inventory on debtors collection period and on creditors payment period you'll find the links to all those lessons in the description below we went through them individually we explained what they are we showed you the formula and we went through an example of how to calculate it as well as how to analyze or interpret these ratios. Okay, so you can check that, those ones out in the links in the description below. But if you have the three or if you know how to calculate them or if you're asked to calculate them, you'll calculate them and then you'll be able to take your day sales in inventory plus your debtors collection period minus your creditors payment period and it should give you your cash conversion 
cycle okay and what you notice here is that the day sales in inventory is added to the debtors collection period why because our day sales in inventory deals with inventory which is a current asset our debtors collection period deals with debtors or accounts receivable which is also a current asset and then we deduct a current liability which is the creditors payment period which is the creditors itself it's a current liability okay so we're deducting their liability because we have to pay our suppliers back okay and that's what will give us our cash conversion cycle obviously if you think of it mathematically you will realize what i said earlier that the lower it is the better it is for the company so what do we want we want the day sales and inventory to be as low as possible we want the debtors collection period to be as low as possible and want the creditors payment period to be as high as possible and that will lower the cash conversion cycle okay so if you think of it mathematically you will realize that and you'll see that as we go through the example so let's go through this example and see how to calculate the cash conversion cycle we did this exact same example when we looked at those three elements the day sales in inventory the debtors collection period as well as the creditors payment period we looked at this same example now we're going to do this using the exact same example we are asked to calculate the cash conversion cycle of the company now what we have done like i said we have done lessons on those three elements so we're not going to recalculate them again we're just going to take the answers that we got on those lessons and calculate the cash conversion cycle so what is our formula again well it's day sales in inventory plus the debtors collection period minus the creditors payment period and that will give us our answer okay and we calculated these answers and we know what they are so 46 days was the day sales in inventory we add that to the debtors collection period which we found to be 31 days and then we deduct the creditors payment period of 30 days and we have the cash conversion cycle of 47 days okay so if you are given the days that is how you will calculate them obviously we've rounded them off to the nearest day okay and we have 47 days that is our cash conversion cycle what does this 47 days mean well it means that from the day we pay our creditors to the day we receive our money from our debtors or from people who owe us it takes 47 days okay very important for you to take note of that what else does this 47 days tell us how do we analyze it like i said in the previous slide we can compare it okay we can compare it to another ratio we can compare it to the cash conversion circle of last year for instance let's say for last year it was 40 days and now for this year as we have calculated it's 47 days that means last year we're doing much better than we are today than we are this year okay because last year it took us fewer days to convert our investment in inventory into cash while this year it's taking us 47 days so it's taking us seven days more if last year was 40 days okay another example is if you are given the industry average or your competitor's cash conversion cycle okay let's say for your competitor was 55 days or the industry average was 55 days that means if yours is 47 days you are doing much better than your competitor or than the industry average meaning than most companies in the industry okay so that is how you analyze this ratio you can also look at the trend how you've been doing in the past five years look at the cash conversion cycle for every year for the past five years for instance and compare it to this particular year and see how you are performing and like we said generally the lower this ratio is the better it is for the company because it means it's taking us fewer days to convert our investment in inventory into cash okay so for those 47 days obviously we have to see how we'll be financing our operations like we can see here we are paying our creditor in 30 days okay and we have not received that money yet from our debtor so we have to have cash on hand we have to have cash in reserve in order for us to pay our suppliers and to ensure that we're paying them on time okay so these are the ways you can look at this ratio now there's a graph which is very helpful which is used when someone is explaining the cash conversion cycle and i also learned this when i was in university which will greatly help you understand the cash conversion cycle and here it is okay we have day zero here and day zero stands for the day we buy the inventory from our suppliers okay so we buy the inventories from our suppliers and look at this here day 30 
okay day 30 is the creditors payment period okay so that means in day 30 we are paying our suppliers back okay so we pay back our suppliers and then we see here in day 46 and you can, as you can see that's the day sales in inventory that is the day we sell our inventory okay so that's day 46 and we know that from day 46 it takes us another 31 days for us to get that money from our debtors okay so we sold them the inventory on day 46 and then it takes us another 31 days for us to get the money from our debtors for them paying us for those goods we sold them okay and so it's 46 plus the 31 days and takes us to 77 days okay so day zero is when we bought the inventory day 30 is when we pay our suppliers back for the inventories that we bought in day zero and day 46 is the day we are able to sell that inventory and then day 77 is the day we receive money from our debtors okay i hope it's making sense in your mind okay so what is the cash conversion cycle well it's from this day here the day and like i mentioned it in the previous uh slide it's from the day we paid our suppliers to the day we receive money from our debtors okay so there i've highlighted is from that day from day 30 to day 77 okay and from day 30 to day 77 how many days are those that's 47 days okay you can calculate it it's 47 days and that is the cash conversion cycle now in our other lesson we looked at what is called the operating cycle what is the operating cycle is the day sales in inventory plus the data's collection period okay day sales in inventory plus the debtors collection period now that is different from the cash conversion cycle but it's similar okay that one will take you from day zero all the way to day 77 so that's 77 days the operating cycle but here the cash conversion cycle is 47 days okay i hope that has made sense we are calculating the average number of days not from the day we bought the inventory but from the day we paid the suppliers for those inventory to the day we receive money from our debtors okay so i hope you have gained value from this lesson i hope it has made sense if you have any questions or queries or you'd like to comment on how this lesson has helped you you can leave them in the comment section below otherwise if you have gained value from this lesson as usual please subscribe to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers